Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey guys, what's going on? It's John Mack. I want to welcome you to another weekly live Q&A session. Uh, so pumped because it's November 2nd. And this is the most exciting month of the entire year. I hope you guys are pumped. I hope you're excited. Uh, really, really ready to help you guys scale. This is it. You're in the midst of Q4. Black Friday, Cyber Monday are just around the corner. So we're going to jump right into the q and in just a sec. Um, so again, this is for November 2nd, 2018 live Q&A call. Now, if this is your first time here on the Q&A calls, these calls are all about getting answers to the questions you have about any of my training, right? So whenever you go through my training, I try to make it as step-by-step -step as possible, but of course there will always be gaps. Uh, you may always have questions you need to get uh, answers for. So that's the point of these weekly calls and things change very quickly and rapidly in this business. So I can give you the basics, I can give you, you know, multiple tactics and methods and strategies, but you have to put on your scientist hat get out there and test like crazy. And of course, with Facebook ads, things change almost every month. So the point of these calls is really to keep you up to date with what's working right now. Now, we also offer hot seats. So if you want, <clears throat> I can unmute your microphone. We can jump on a, li a live hot seat and I can help you with your business. Um, all, the cars, all the calls are recorded, so don't worry if you miss them. We put them up in the Facebook groups after typically same day or next day. And uh, there's a few house rules. So these calls, please stick to your questions related to my training materials only. We don't want to get people confused. There's a lot of ways to skin the cat, but we want to keep focused on my training only uh, so that we're all in the same path and on board. In terms of Commerce HQ technical support questions, please just email support at commercehq.com and our amazing support team over there will take care of you and make sure you are happy. And bear in mind, we get a lot of people on the call, so if you don't get your questions answered, especially at the end, just post the question in the Facebook group after. Uh, and try to keep everything neat with your questions, you know, three questions max per chat line, um, and be detailed as possible, no fragmented sentences, please. So again, my name is John Mack, I'm the co-founder of Commerce HQ, and I'll be your main coach for today. In terms of getting extra help, if you want to do one-on-one, -on -one, private coaching, uh, that is an additional cost with my Blue Label program, so reach out to me if you're interested in that. Uh, but the point of these live calls is to get you the help you need to move forward in your business, okay? So ask questions, be active on the call, watch the past live recordings as well, it's gonna help you a lot, because obviously a lot of the same questions get um, asked each and every week. And overall, guys, please be positive, have a good attitude, this is the most exciting time of year, this is it. We're in Q4. November is going to be massive for you. So uh, get excited. <laughs> and um, we're obviously also here to help each other grow. So uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. So that is really key. And that having that abundance mindset, there's more than enough to go around. I know a lot of people right now who are scaling the exact same products and it's all working for them. So don't worry about competition or saturation. Let's all help each other grow and figure out what's working best in the business. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in Q&A time. Uh, get your questions popped into the chat box there and I'll go through them one by one. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to start stacking up those questions and then we will begin answering them. Um, but let me know if you can see the screen okay and you can hear me okay. Just throw a one in the box real fast. Let me know everything's good. Cool. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right, so yeah, get your questions in the chat box right now. I'll give you a few minutes, and uh, more people are coming into the room as well. Nice to see everybody here. We got Alex, Andrew, Attila, Brian, Caesar, Chris, Dale, David, Don, good to see you, Gary, Herson, good to see you, Ines, Jabil, Jamie, Jin, Leo, Lloyd, Michael, Chaba, good to see you. Noah, good to see you. Orlando, good to see you. Got a lot of cool people in here. Tom, Tony. Wow, awesome guys. So, so what's going on? Talk to me. How can I help you move forward this week in your business? What are the pitfalls? What are the obstacles that you're running into um, in terms of product selection, targeting, optimizing, scaling? Where where are the holes and the leaks that we can help fill in your business? Okay, first question here from Lloyd. If 30% of ad sets don't stick on a product, does that mean it's a dud even if the conversion rate is 10% daily? Yeah, so there's only two things that matter um, when 
deciding whether a product is a winner or not, or if you want to scale a product, right? Two things you need. Number one, it has to be able to hit your ROAS goal. Uh, typically, it's going to be two times or higher. If you have good margins, that'll give you around 40, 50% ROI. That's number one. It's two times ROAS or higher. But number two, 30% of the ad sets you launch need to be able to hit two times ROAS or higher. If you can't get one out of three ad sets you launch to work hitting your ROAS goal, it's going to be, you're going to have a very difficult time scaling. Okay, so it doesn't really matter about your CPMs or your CPCs or your conversion rate. None of that matters. The only thing that matters are really two key metrics, ROAS and your win rate. So how many of the ad sets you launch actually stick on day one or day two? Okay. Uh, next question here from Leo. Is it too late to make another video created from Fiverr if the original video has been running for about a month? Um, is it too late? No, absolutely not. So it's always best to make your own video, you know, from people on Fiverr who can take other videos out there and match them together, right? That's the best way to do it. You never want to rip a video and download a video and just run that exact same one because you'll probably get banned for copyright infringement. So always make your own videos by mashing up YouTube videos or other Facebook videos together using someone on Fiverr. Um, and if you have a winning product, it's definitely good to send that winning product to yourself or to a few people on Fiverr and get them to do an unboxing video. Unboxing videos perform the best overall uh, with cold traffic and for retargeting purposes. So definitely try that out. Michael asks, can you elaborate why it's best to launch ads around 3 a.m.? Yeah, absolutely. So. So the way the Facebook algorithm functions is that Facebook ads needs a full 24, hour, 24 hours to optimize properly. So we always want to start new ad sets and ads um, after 12 a.m. on the ad account time zone, right? Because that's the start of a new day. Now, we start them at 3 a.m. because around 12 a.m., there's not many people that are online or looking to buy or going to be clicking or anything like that. But... If you set the ad to start at 3 a.m., it takes about an hour for that ad to actually start running and driving impressions and traffic. So you're now you're at about 4 a.m. And depending where you are in the world, like for, for me um, on the West Coast, PST, 4 a.m. would be 7 a.m. on the East Coast, right? So that's a sweet spot window where you're actually going to get quite a few sales early in the morning, 5, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. So essentially what we're doing here is <clears throat> we're working with the algorithm to give it a full day to optimize, but we're also kind of kicking it, kicking it in the butt and really getting it to start off well, um, having a solid running start by starting it a bit later in the early morning so that you get the clicks, the click-through rates, this, the lower CPCs, because with the Facebook ad algorithm, ads and ad sets need to start off well. If you don't have good initial conditions, meaning in the first five or $10 ad spend, Facebook is going to demote that ad. It's not going to get good placement um, in the newsfeed, right? So by starting it off a little bit later in the early morning, you're going to get better click-through rates, which is going to help everything in terms of your CP, CPMs and CPCs and all that good stuff. So <clears throat> for us, we always launch new ad sets at 3 a.m. ad account time zone. And regarding time zones, we find PST works the best. If you're on EST or something else, that's fine. It's not going to be a huge difference, but you always want to start uh, ad sets off on a new day, right? Rule of thumb is never launch new ad sets past 12 noon ad account time zone. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> so Dale says, I've completed week one and have a store set up. Uh, quite stuck at product selection and ad building. Wondering if you have more videos on building ads and what's in the training for week two. I'm learning to use Camsasia also on ads sector. Yeah, so I guess if you can be more specific, I can help you there, Dale, um, with exactly what, what issues you're running into. Uh, all right, so Jamie, I have a product that is getting a lot of likes on the test ad, but no conversions. Yeah, so there, these um, likes and comments and shares and and even clicks in these things, this is all vanity metrics is what we call it, right? So we don't even look at the engagement on an ad post anymore. We just look at the front end and the back end of the funnel. The front end is your CPM, CTR, and CPC, 
and the back end is your cost per object cart, your cost per sale, and your ROAS. So you start an ad set off, it spends five bucks. If you don't get a click, it's getting paused. Um, if it gets a click and it's below $3 CPC, you let it run to about $10. If there's no add to cart, you're gonna pause it. And if it spends 20 bucks with no sale, you're gonna pause. So <clears throat> you have to look at things as the front end and the back end of the funnel. Where are the leaks? What, what's the issue the product campaign or the offer you're running is having? Is it on the front end or is it on the back end? Right? If it's on the front end, maybe your ad is not good enough. It's not enticing enough. Maybe it's not, you know, it's not triggering with that audience you're targeting and your cost per clicks are too high and your CTR is too low, right? So in that case, you would change the ad creative or the targeting. If it was a backend issue, you weren't getting at any ad to carts, uh, maybe the product price is too high, that's usually the cause, and if you're getting lots of ad to carts but no sale, then it could be the shipping, so you might wanna try free shipping or just reducing the price by $5 increments, okay? So always look at a product campaign um, as a funnel where you have the front end, which is on Facebook, and the back end, which is on your store. And really do not even worry or care about vanity metrics, which are engagement uh, metrics like likes, shares, comments, etc. <clears throat> okay, Cesar says here, what is the best way to promote your website and convert to sales? I got Facebook ads, lots of likes, but no sales. Yeah, I just answered that question. So if you're, either you're product is off, your targeting is off, or your ad is off, right? You gotta find out where the leak is exactly. Um, Alex says, in the modules, it's al it always says fulfillment, but there's not a lot of help on actually fulfilling the orders. Um, yeah, so a few ways to do fulfillment. There's three main ways. The first way is to manually do it one by one on AliExpress. You just order up the product for your customer and put in the information, and boom, the vendor is gonna send it off to your customer uh, with e-packet e -packet delivery. The next way is through Dropified. So that uses AliExpress as well, but it's gonna automate the process, so within just a few clicks, it's gonna automatically fill in all your customer's details into the AliExpress order form. That's the second option. Number three, which is I prefer, is a CSV export. So within, with Commerce HQ, you can set up a custom CSV file uh, with, and that talk to your vendor to see you know, what they prefer in terms of the headers and the columns. And you take all your orders from yesterday, you export the CSV file, you send it to your vendor, they fulfill, and in two to three days, they send you back the tracking numbers. You can now upload those tracking numbers with our new feature in Commerce HQ we just released, and then it's going to automatically mark all those orders as uh, fulfilled and shipped, and also send the tracking numbers off to your customers automatically as well. So that's the, those are the three ways to do fulfillment. <clears throat> Uh, Lloyd says, did they have to hit ROAS goal on day one or over three days? Uh, on day one, right guys? So when I say 30% win rates of the ad sets you launch, it has to be day one, day two max. It's got to work out of the gate. Okay, Leslie says, purchase domain before watching week two product selection process. Um, desk dudads.com general enough name for Brianna products. I'll be picking it from ad sector, shipping another one. No, that's totally fine. Leslie, like don't get hung up on the domain name or your store name. It actually doesn't really matter. As long as the logo looks professional um, and it's easy to type in, then it's fine. And even more so, it's not even really, it doesn't really even matter if you have to even type it in because we're sending all the traffic straight from Facebook ad uh, to your product page. So that's totally fine. Get the products, guys. Don't let anything hold you back right now, especially if you're brand new to e-commerce, you're setting up your store. Get the, find the products, load them up on your store, and launch ads right now. You gotta find a winner right now so that by the time Black Friday rolls around, you're ready to go, you're ready to scale it up big, okay? All right, good questions today, guys. Keep them coming here. So. Jose, if I understand correctly, what I have to do is to start to search for 30 products to grow and also understand Facebook pixels develop entering data to, for the same type of data to find buyers and so understand the products can be varied niches. My question is if I take one product, fitness, one kitchen, one pets, um, is the pixel not going to get confused? Yeah, so good questions here, Jose. So guys, the pixel has nothing to do with it now, 
right? So week after week, you guys always talk about the pixel this and pixel that, but the pixel doesn't matter. The pixel is essentially just there to track your metrics from your store and feed back into Facebook ads to tell you what's working and what not. That's number one. Number two, the pixel is there to build up your custom audiences. Now, where does the optimization actually occur? It occurs at the ad account level. <clears throat> That's why now it's best practice to have one winning product per ad account or one niche or one type of audience, right? You want to have all the data and the ad account um, focused in and honed in on the same type of people you're targeting, right? So if you test 30 products on an ad account and let's say one of them is a winner and it's a phishing product, okay, great. All those other products you tested, they get deleted. The, fan po the, the posts on the fan page get deleted. The ads get deleted. Now you're just left with the one winning product, which is the phishing product. And now <clears throat> you're going to scale the phishing product on that ad account. And that's the only product you're going to run on that ad account. If you have other phishing products with, that you're going to be targeting with the same audiences, you can use the same ad account. You see? So it's not about the pixel. <clears throat> it's about the ad account. Uh, so that's what we do. We test 30 products. We find a winner. Now that ad account is focused on that winner, we scale it up. If we want to test more products, we fire up a second ad account and rinse and repeat the same process. 30 products, we find them, we test them, we find a winner, and then we scale up that winner on that second ad account, and that's it. So you keep doing that. That's the best practice right now, best way to do it. In terms of the store setup and pixel setup, you can have one general store and one niche per collection or even one winning product per collection and just share the pixel, like one pixel from the first ad account and share it with the other ad accounts. Uh, and that's the only one that's gonna be in your store and that's it, you're off to the races. Okay, Lloyd, um, is it okay to launch my ads at 3 a.m. UK even though there's four hours ahead of EST, which would be about 11 p.m. and PST 9, we better launch ads at 10 a.m. Yeah, so Lloyd, <clears throat> you always want to follow my methods and training with the ad account time zone. I'll say it like a million times. Start your ads off at 3 a.m., 3 in the morning, ad account time zone. If you're farther away in the world, farther away from PSC or EST, you can do 12, 12.01 a.m. That's fine. But either 12.01 a.m. or 3 a.m., ad account time zone. Uh, okay, next question from Lloyd. I'm trying to scale my product and launch some brand new ads this today. How long should I give them to see if 30% ROAS hits? One day, two day, three day. I already answered that. On day one or two, they need to be able to hit your ROAS goal. Uh, Emily, nice to see you. Hello as well. Um, Herson <clears throat> says he's testing a campaign with $13 spent with six, uh, six clicks but no add to cart. Should I pause it? Uh, yes. Um, Leo, don't I have to worry if customers find out that the item, or back to that point really quick, Hurson, um, you know, if you're getting cheap CPCs like below a dollar or below buck fifty, even, you can try dropping the price in $5 increments to see if you get more add to carts after that. Okay, so from Leo, don't I have to worry if customers find out the item comes from China? Uh, no. So Leo, if you're concerned about that, you can just leave, you can just put a note in the order to the vendor, uh, not to include any invoice and they don't usually anyway, um, but you can ask them or make a note if you're concerned about that, but it's never really a problem or, or an issue, so don't worry too much about that. Edgar, should I run $10 ad sets for 48 hours to ensure metrics like CPM, ATC, ad to cart, CPC are reliable, or focus on two times ROAS in 24? Yeah, so Edgar, um, my rules are always the same. They haven't really changed for years. Uh, so on a new ad set, you spend five bucks, no click, pause. If you spend five bucks and the cost per click is above $3, pause. If you spend $10 and no add to cart, you're gonna pause it. And if you spend 20, no sale, pause. Okay, so just follow those rules. Uh, and then over three over three days, if the ROAS is below um, two times, then you're probably gonna pause as well, unless your margins are really high and you can get profitable, profitable below two times ROAS. Leslie says, what if there isn't an e-packet option, but there's DHL six to 13 days for free? Um, yeah, that's fine. DHL is is great. So if they provide that, that's cool. Either DHL or e-packet is, is fine. 
Um, Edgar, second question, always test with purchase objective. Yes, only guys, only, only, only run conversion campaigns, optimizing for purchase, nothing else, especially this time of year, right? We want to be showing our ads only to people most likely to buy. Uh, Jose, is the store formula mentoring program? I asked that because I'm interested in mentoring. Yeah, no. So Blue Label is my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So you can go to johnmag.co slash apply and um, apply there if you want one-on-one -on -one direct coaching with me. Okay, Herson, can you check this out? Pixel hasn't fired yet. One of these campaigns has a sale. Yeah. So guys, if pixels don't fire, sometimes they fire late. It takes a few hours. So just wait until the end of the day and see if uh, that sale pops into one of the ad sets. Noah, for campaign structure, do you find it best to have the same three ads per ad set? If so, does the change does that change when scaling? Uh, yeah. A duplicate ads. <clears throat> we just changed the, the video thumbnail. Good questions, guys. Keep them coming. Emily, um, when testing products, audiences that are converting between 1 million and 5 million, do I dupe these at 80 or $100 or create 10 ads with different interests that will add up to 5 million audience? What should I do to the budget of the ads? Um, okay, so I think your question is about testing. <clears throat> you you kind of have like a two-part question here and you're mixing up testing with scaling. So um, there's really three parts to the whole process, right? So you, you take 10 to 30 products and we're going to start testing them. The way we test them is we do two to three ad sets minimum. Some people like to do five, five to 10 ad sets if they have a big budget. <clears throat> and we split test interests. Uh, we do lots of intersects. We just mix and match different types of targeting to see if anything is going to stick. If you have three sales or more on a product, that's a potential winner. We move it to the test scaling phase, which means we're going to launch 10 more ad sets towards that product. If 30% of those ad sets stick, three out of 10, we're going to keep launching ad sets every day, 10, 20 or more ad sets per day. Uh, by duplicating the best ad sets with the highest ROAS and the most sales with higher budgets, uh, usually five dupes at a time into a new campaign. You can also split test into the same campaign, see what works best. <clears throat> so hopefully that helps. Eduardo. When we duplicate an ad set, do we always dupe the original campaign, even if we're duping an ad set that's already a duplicate of the original set? Um, don't get don't get it like so confused. There's no right wrong way to do it. You basically just look at the last 72 hour window or even yesterday, your best top ad sets with the most sales and the best row as you dupe them five times into a new campaign or the same campaign with different budgets and you do that every day. Just keep it simple. Joan asked, do you schedule your ad launching at 3 a.m. with Facebook platform? You have to see that. No, definitely. We always schedule them at 3 a.m. Yep. Uh, Leslie, your training video show G Suite for emailing customers. Should I cancel Outlook through GoDaddy, which is better? We use G Suite, Leslie. That's what I recommend. Um, REM, can you tell me how much total I need to start? This is my first time. I don't know what to do. Uh, you need probably about a thousand bucks to start with Facebook ads to find a winner and to build up data in your ad account. Chris, conversion ad objective for retargeting too. Uh, yes, purchase, but we optimize. We um, we manual bid. $1.50 for link clicks for retargeting. Herson, um, yeah, I can't look at any metrics right now or screenshots on the live calls. Um, if you want to do our coaching call afterwards on Monday, we can definitely take a look at things together more closely. Lloyd, I've tried different budget types, but my, but my higher budget ad sets never stick. What do I do? Yeah, Lloyd, so um, maybe that's not a winner, but by far, guys, if you have a real winning product, $80 budgets and $100 budgets are working the best. They're giving you the most amount of sales, the best ROAS, uh, and the most stable. So you probably don't have a winning product. Um, Neo, do you use or your audiences are not targeted or they're too big? But probably most times it's the it's the product. Neo, do you use multiple Facebook pixels or just the main pixel? Just the main pixel, the pixel doesn't matter anymore. You can have one pixel with multiple ad accounts and share the pixel between all the ad accounts and one pixel on your store and you're fine. Uh, okay, roughly how much do I need for ad per product? Also, where does the product come from? Do we purchase it before? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think you have a lot of basic questions here. Uh, 
REM, I'm going to give you a link to I'm not to get store formula one second here. Just grab this link for you here. Okay, so go here, watch the presentation, get store formula. It's going to help answer all your basic questions there. Okay, so a Maca, please, where can I find the Dropify app? Um, Dropify.com. Alex, when doing the 25 product test, as long as you find one winner, what is the average value that you must spend before you start having a positive? Yeah, great question. Great question, Alex. So a lot of people don't understand that in this business, in this industry, you got to spend money to make money, which means you got to buy data. So what will happen when you're brand new in the business? You're going to fire up a new ad account. The new, the new ad account has no data. You got to warm up the ad account with data, which takes roughly between $1,000 to $2,000. Okay. So um, what will happen after that is you're going to find a winner, typically within the first $1,000 to $2,000 ad spent. You may, so in the beginning, you're going to lose money. Without a doubt, you're going to lose one, two grand. Then you're going to start breaking even, and then you will. it'll be like a hockey stick. It'll go straight up when you start scaling that winner, and you get profitable, right? So definitely be prepared to invest in your business, to buy the data, to see what works. Uh, Neo, which countries do you target? U.S. only to start, then we break out to more countries okay. after that. Jose, it means that the store at the start has to be general without any specific type of niche. That's correct. Yeah, general store. Then a good product has to be found to race the rest of the products and fill the products related. But yeah, that's exactly it, Jose. Exactly what you said. Spot on. You start with a general store, you find a winner, and then you focus on that winning product. Amaka, how do I add products with the app? Um, you can add products through Dropified if you want to do it automatically. Um... No problem, no problem, guys. So, Leslie, should I ever just put some products in the store just because they're cool looking so people click around? Uh, no. So, you only want to add products to the store that are proven, um, that you found using Ad Sector or other methods that are, are proven products. Don't just choose random products and put them on your store. Guys, can you put a one in the box if you can hear me? Some people are saying they can't hear me. Put a one in the box if you can still hear me, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, Neo, do you target more products more towards women versus men? Yes, we do, especially right now um, in the in the holiday buying season with Christmas and everything. Women buy more products; they spend more. Um, so, target women only and try to find products for for women only. That being said, if it works for women, then you can also split test men after that and see if that works too. Uh, Leslie is saying, having a hard time with ad sector, finding videos with 20,000, 30,000 likes. Um, yeah, so not not what we're looking for right now. So with, with ad sector, what you want to do is you want to find products launched in the last seven days, last 30 days max, okay? And what we're looking at are video ads only, and we're looking for um, video ads with at least half a million views, preferably over a million views or more, right? Those are the types of products we're gonna you're going to want to test on your store and with ads. So don't worry too much about the likes. It's all about the video views with ad sector. Austin, if we're just starting to test products, do you think there's time to find a winner before Black Friday and then Christmas? Absolutely. Guys, you can find a winning product literally within two days. Two days you can find a winner. So don't get confused. Don't get worried or scared. You have so much time before Black Friday. Get out there and keep, get start testing. Two, within two days, I can take 30 products, two to three ad sets each, and within two days, I'm going to know if I have a winner or not. It's that simple, right? We're just looking for three sales on one product, then we try to scale it. So get out there, guys. Start launching ads right now. Get cracking. This is it. Okay, Emily, I have ads converting at two to three times ROAS of two million audiences. Very nice. Do I dupe these at 80 or 100? Split test. Split test all different budgets between 10 and 100 dollars. So you would dupe five, uh, five ad sets per day, per best ad set, and you would try different budgets. <clears throat> so you could try like 15, 20, 25, uh, 30. You do five dollar increments, ten dollar increments, or bigger increments. But you want to split test up and down the range between ten and hundred dollar budgets, 
if the higher budgets worked, 80 or 100, then you're going to test even higher, 200, 300, 400, 500, and see if those stick. And typically over a $100 budget on auto bid doesn't work so well, but, but you can test and see. Edgar says, should I scale with my ad account budget limit in mind 5,000 to make sure Facebook doesn't disable it once I'm profitable? No, Edgar. Um, hammer it. So what will happen is you'll hit that cap of 5,000. Um, the ads won't turn off. They'll just stop spending. Then they'll restart the next day. Then what you do after a couple days is you send in, in a, um, a chat message to Facebook and tell them to bump that up to 10,000. They usually do it within one or two days. Lloyd, I'm trying to scale and every day launching dupes my best ads over three days. My revenue is not going up, staying the same. Do I move on to another product? Yes, you do. It's not a winner. John, if you have had an account closed in your first business manager account, you open a second business manager account on the same Facebook profile with a different email. Is it safe to get on Facebook chat support and ask them to decrease your ad account limit for your sec? Yeah, it is. It's totally safe. Definitely try that out. Uh, Tony, can you round us of your ad sector coupon code, please? Yep, it's John Mac. So that should knock off. I think usually it's 250 a month with the John Mac coupon code. It should be uh, 175 a month. Lloyd's, I have launched 144 ad sets and only 10 have stuck. Well, then you don't have a winner. Guys, don't fall. I see this like, it drives me crazy because I see this happen each and every week. You guys, um, it's a massive pitfall. Big, big mistake is to try to scale a bronze product. And by what I mean by bronze product is a product that makes sales but your ROAS is never above two times and you're never hitting your 30% win rate goal. Okay. Do not fall into that trap. You're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of money. When you find a winner, you will know it because anything you throw at the wall, any type of ad sets you launch, it's going to stick like 30% or more are easily going to stick. So don't fall into the trap of trying to scale up a bronze product, not a true winner. Okay. You're going to waste a lot of time and money. So get out there, Retest another batch of uh, 30 products and get and get to it. Okay, Leslie again. How do we? How do you feel about clothing? Where people things clothing things people wear as products for selection. Does sizing become an issue? Yeah. So sizing, there is a lot of great sizing charts there that you can get from vendors if you are selling clothing. So just make sure that you include those on your product page with like a graph of the sizing chart. That will usually help. Um, so John says, if you delete your one, if you delete one of your business manager accounts, do you know if Facebook will allow you to create a new one with a different email? Uh, no. So you can only you can only create two business managers per Facebook profile. Um, you'd have to fire up a new Facebook profile if you want to make more, more BMs after that. He, John also says, if Facebook allows you to create a new business manager account with a different email, would you be able to start fresh and make an ad account? Yeah. So it all comes down to the Facebook profile. Right? If you're having issues with ad accounts, business managers, and everything like that, just go get a friend or family member or someone else um, to make them a new business manager for you and use their login. Herson, if I tested some products a month ago and I still see them ad, on ad sector killing it, should I give them a try again? Um, yeah, only if they're only if they've been launched in the last excuse me, only if the ad has been launched in the last seven days or less. All right, guys, 30-minute warning, 30-minute countdown for the rest of the Q&A session. Get your questions in. i got 30 minutes left, guys. We're halfway there. Really good questions today, so please keep them coming. Always happy to help you guys move forward in your business. Okay, Edgar, the two times ROAS should be read from two days average or a 24-hour basis. Guys, always, always, always optimize with the last 72-hour window. 72 hours minimum. Never make decisions on one day worth of data or even two day worth of data. And also at the same time, don't make decisions on seven days worth of data. And the worst thing you can do is make decisions and optimize with the lifetime. I see people do that. I just shake my head. It's the worst thing to do. Three days is ideal because with Facebook ads, things can change so rapidly every few days. And we find the 72 hour window is going to give you the best amount of data and uh, most recent amount of time to optimize properly. Okay, Michael, when testing at five to ten dollars, we we still pause if no conversions are at the cart after one or two days. Yes, that's you you pause after ten dollar 
ad spend with no add to cart. It doesn't matter what your budget is. Okay, IBSA, how do you deal with video? I don't want people, I don't want to steal people's content. Yeah, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, what you do is you go on Fiverr, you hire someone to do a video edit for you. So you give them a bunch of links from YouTube or Facebook or other places and have them do a mashup of all those videos into one video ad for you and have text overlay and your logo and all that good stuff. Okay, REM, if I if I register and get stuck, are you gonna be able to help us? Yeah, that's what these live Q&A calls are for, right? So each and every week, uh, as part of my training programs, you get access to me on these live Q&A calls to help you out in your business. Emily, I have ads that are converting um, two to three rows for two to three days, but on the fourth or fifth day, it doesn't become profitable more. 30 percent ads I do convert. What do I do? You gotta keep, keep launching ads every day. So the only way to make this business work, guys, is you have to launch ad sets every single day. As long as you're launching at new ad sets every day by duplication or hitting new audiences and you're optimizing correctly, pausing bad ones every day, you're going to keep cycling through good ad sets and you'll be able to maintain profitability and scale while being profitable at the same time. So every day you have to launch ad sets when scaling and you have to be optimizing and pausing. It's a two-fold action that, can, that never stops. Even if you're testing or scaling, it doesn't matter. You're always launching ad sets daily. So Lloyd, is it is the best way to find winners by following top stores on Commerce Inspector? Uh, yeah, so we use Ad Sector, we find top stores on there, and then we follow them with Commerce Inspector and see what recent products they launched. If you can verify the when the product they just launched and find the ad for it and like double verify it, that's best. Eduardo, if we have a large number of ads to carts, but less than two times ROAS over three days, do we kill the ad set? You kill it, right? You kill it. One times ROAS, this is, this is the trap I was talking about, guys. Just because you're getting sales doesn't mean you're making money, right? It has to be over two times ROAS pretty much across the board for any product as long as your margins are at least 60%. If it's not, it's not profitable. You're losing money, right? So don't fall into that trap of making sales but not making any money. Um, Gabe, should we use should we be using manual bidding when scaling in the fourth quarter? As no manual bidding wasn't working well. Yeah, you can definitely test it out. It's always good to split test things, guys. But um, right now we're just scaling with auto bid. Um, Eighty hundred dollar budgets are working best, and just hammering those with dupes uh, into bigger audiences. Tony, I often find that when I dupe the dupes, pick up on the pick up the traffic in the original stagnates. If you had this, yeah, of course that's going to happen. Like ad sets doesn't matter if they're dupes or originals or whatever, they're gonna die. Ad sets are gonna die in three days or a week or two weeks if you're lucky, but they're gonna die. Like they're not gonna last very long. That's why we gotta keep launching ad sets daily and optimizing daily. It doesn't matter which ones survive. You just keep hammering away. Jose, to find a winning product is something to have a notion of what kind of products. My question is to start must be done with products and price ranges. How do you can you recommend what price ranges is good? Yeah, so Jose, it's just whatever's working in the marketplace. So if you use Ad Sector, Commerce Inspector, you're gonna see what's what's selling and what's working. But across the board from what I see, uh, $24.99 is the, best, is the best price point for margin and for scale. All right, so Andrew says, so when you first find a winner, you should launch 10 ad sets to new audiences and five ad sets to the same audience with different budgets, so 15 ad sets total. Um, there's no right or wrong way or how many ads that you should launch more or less. It's up to you and your budget, right? For us, um, we, we, we test a bunch of products. We find a winner. We launch 10 ad sets to a potential winner. If three of them stick, then we go crazy. We launch 20, 30 ad sets by duplication and by new audiences. And we just keep hammering to see what works. But the key in terms of scaling profitably is to not spend more than half of your budget um, you spent yesterday. So for example, if I spent a thousand dollars yesterday, don't spend more than 1500 today. Then you'll scale, uh, you'll scale profitably. Neo, should I show delivery times on product page or not? No, you definitely should not. That'll kill your conversion rate. Gabe, are you increasing budgets on the ad set? Or are you duplicating? Never increase the budget on the ad set anymore, guys. Do not touch ad sets that are working. Don't touch them. If they're working, leave them alone. We always scale now by duplication with higher budgets. Neo, do you offer bundle packages? And if so, what app do you recommend? 
Um, I don't know what you mean by what app. Uh, with Commerce HQ, everything's built in. Um, so with, with the bundles, you would just create different variants. So it's like buy one, buy three, buy five, buy seven, and then give them deeper discounts if they buy more and more. Each variant is a different bundle. So that's how you would set it up. Right now. Cool, guys. Well, 20 minutes left. Keep the questions coming in. We've got a lot of people in the house today. Super excited to help you guys out. Uh, we got Alex, uh, Andrew. we got Tilla, Austin, Brian, Dale, David. we got Don, Eduardo. Uh, who else is in here? Edgar, Fiona, Gabe, Gary, uh, Jabil, Jamie, Jin, John, Jonas. Juan, good to see you, buddy. we got Leo, Lloyd, Natalia, and I see you as well. Um, Tony Zaldi, Tina. Cool, guys. So don't be shy. You guys are here for a reason. Get your answers put in right now. What's happening in your business? Let me know. Also, share any wins you guys had this week as well. If you guys found a winner, if uh, you're scaling up, anything that's exciting happening in your business, let us know. Fiona says, uh, sorry, I'm late. I'm just started. I'm a total newbie. So I have a Dropify account. And do I use Dropify to put products in my store? You, you can, guys. But like... The problem with Dropify is it's just going to fill your store with a bunch of junk, right? Never put put random products in your store. You have to be hyper selective with the products you put in your store and only add products that are proven from ads you found in ad sector or elsewhere. And the also problem with Dropify filling products in your store is it's going to bring over a bunch of random titles and, and just product descriptions. You don't want that. You want to do it yourself, right? Nice, short and sweet uh, titles and descriptions. Dropify is really only good if you want to automate um, AliExpress fulfillment. But as soon as you find a winner, you're going to move to CSV export anyway. Jose, one of the issues is I think to search for a winning a winning product to where is where to search. All I know is AliExpress. How can I know what other supplier? Uh, well, if you can't find it, find it on AliExpress, you could try eBay or Amazon or elsewhere. Gabe says, if we have a flagship product and not looking to sell just random products, is it best to run PPE ads and educational, then retarget them with conversion for the product? What would you recommend? Now, that's a much more complicated question. We'd have, we'd have to handle that offline. Uh, so shoot me an email on that one. Jeff says, love your team, training, and software, brother. Looking forward to coming to one of your live events. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff, for sticking with us. Always appreciate it to hear uh, great feedback like that. Uh, I may be speaking, actually, in um, Affiliate World Conference in Bangkok, uh, Thailand, the first week of December. So I'm just waiting to hear back to confirm that. But that'll be uh, a big speaking event. And if anybody's on that side of the world, it'd be definitely cool to meet up there. John says the updates to Commerce HQ are awesome, but wanted to know if the funnels will be available before the end of Q4. Yes, we're trying to get the one-click upsell funnels out to you ASAP. I'm really trying to make a big push with the dev team to get that out this month or next month. So we're trying our hardest, guys. Just know that we do have a small but very, very professional and uh, expert dev team. Uh, but we may have to make sure that features are all bug tested before we release them, right? Um, we can't have anything break on your store. Uh, that would be a nightmare, especially in Q4. So we're very, very cautious, very, very careful to release new features or apps to make sure they are um, fully vetted and tested. Tony says, just to let you know, I'm currently on tour doing a concert in Germany, but, but I've always tried to be on these great Friday sessions. Cool, Tony. Well, thanks for coming again. Good to see you. All right, guys, 15 minutes left. Get your last questions in. Let's go. This is it. Friday, we are in Q4 in the thick of it, November 2nd, guys. I am so pumped to see. You know, someone just posted in the store formula group there, a 21K day. I can't wait to see people start posting 30, 40, 50K days, especially on Black Friday. I'm sure someone's going to hit 100K in one day easily. So this is your biggest opportunity, your biggest chance to get this business to work for you is right now now so find those products launch those ads find the winner and get scaled up right now so lloyd says on the latest products i'm testing five out of ten stick on the test fail skis but since the win rate has been below 30 percent yeah so then maybe try dropping the price right guys prices like if you look at product 
product is king, price is queen. So always um, try to optimize that price, at least as, as long as you have $15 margin, you can drop that price down to get a convert more, to get more sales. Edgar says, do you recommend using one rule to cap ad spend? For example, over $5 cl with no click, then pause. Um, yeah, you can do that simple rule. I recommend it with automation guys, automated rules, to do one rule at a time and see how it affects your business. Neo says, what do you feel can stop people from buying outside of price being too high, poor product description or poor pictures? Uh, it's not about any of that, guys. It's about the product itself. Either a product is a winner and it scales easily or it's not a winner and you're never going to be able to make money with it, right? So don't fall into the trap of like all oh, the price or the images or the description, none of that, right? Focus on what's working. Test it out. If it doesn't scale for you, move on. REM says is $3,000 would be enough to start. Yes, that's perfect. Gabe, what company do you, what company do you use for custom packaging for products? Um, the vendor usually does that. So you have, again, like email me and we can have a, a better chat. Uh, it sounds like you're more probably suited for Blue Label as well. So I'm going to give you a link and just apply there so we can have a phone call and conversation about what you're up to. Okay, so Fiona says, I'm unsure as, as to what I should try selling. How do I find out what's trending? If there's any training to help me out? Um, yeah, so Fiona, do you have store formula? Uh, if you don't, you should get it because it shows you all the basics, um, like how to find products using uh, ad sector. So that is, I'll just send you a link here. Okay, so Doug says as a newbie, what is the best way to input products so that I can understand how it works besides Dropified? Um, besides where, yeah, so Doug, you just manually upload the products, right? You just take the title, the images, description, and you throw them up manually. It's not, it doesn't actually take that long with Commerce HQ. But again, if you want to see the basics, guys, um, check out Store Formula for sure. John says, do you believe in pre-sell pages? Um, Sometimes it depends how you anchor them, right? If you have a product that needs a lot of pre-selling, like uh, health and wellness, beauty products, skincare, that type of stuff, oils and all that, then yeah, pre-sell can, can help and can work. Um, but we're going to be testing that further as we get our funnels out and the one-click upsells. Gabe says we have a product that sells $100, but we notice it best sells at 60. Would you keep running it at 40% off or just sell it at 60? Worried about devaluing the product. Um, Again, that's a, a conversation we have to have, have offline. Your business seems very interesting and, and complex, so we can definitely help you out there over a phone call. Alex says, I'm currently in school, first year, and this really making me wonder if I wasted my money on school. <laughs> oh, no. Do you think that this business is more valuable than continuing school? At what point would you consider dropping out? Ooh, Alex, that is a very tough question. I don't know your personal situation. I don't know your income, none of that. All I can say, guys, is if you want to start an e-commerce business, it's good to have a side income or a full-time job, some sort of income to stabilize you and to give you enough investment money to get started. You need about three grand um, overall to get the business started and you want to give yourself three to six months ramp up period before you quit your job or quit school or anything else. Um, yeah, so Fiona, I gave you the link there. I'm not sure if you didn't see it. Let me see if I can put this in here again for you. Yeah, so check that. Fiona, and I just gave you the link there. Noah, any emerging ad units that we're testing that are testing uh, well right now? Yes. So um, collection ads are working extremely well for retargeting. So try that out. And da, 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 da. Lloyd, what is the best way to find winning products? I already mentioned that ad sector and, and commerce inspector. Zaldi says, thank you so much, John. You're an angel. What are you doing? What you're doing is amazing and very noble. Helping people have a great life. God bless you and your family. Long live. Hey, thanks so much. Zaldi, very kind words. Um, happy to help you guys and give you as much value as possible. I want to see you succeed. Um, I want to see you win using Commerce HQ, hitting those 100K months. That's my ultimate goal, guys. You know, we're all in this together. We're all in this amazing e-commerce journey. 
uh, together. So I want to help you get there, right? Pass on the baton. Gabe says, does Commerce HQ have an app where you can s where we can sell U.S. vendor products and automatically email them the purchase order? Um, yeah, we have a we have a CSV export app again, Gabe. Like you have a lot of questions there, very specific. We can we can have a chat. So just go johnmacco slash apply and we can set up a call. Okay, buddy. Cool. All right. Uh, if you want to know problem, Lazaro, how can I start with Commerce HQ and e-commerce is not a program? Um, it's closed right now, but if you email support, they can give you a backdoor link. So support at commercehq.com and just ask for the e-commerce accelerator program. They give you a backdoor link. Uh, Gabe, no problem. Jeff, when I hit 100K a month, I'm buying you and your family a trip to the destination of your choice. <laughs> Sounds good, buddy. Uh, Michael says, upon hitting sales with winners, what amount of the profit needs to go back into the ads? Um, yeah, so cash flow is a funny thing. I never really talked about cash flow before. I, I probably should start talking more about it. Essentially, if you're in the States, you're going to get paid out three days from Stripe. PayPal, you can get payment every day if you want to your bank account. But essentially, you need to be able to float three days of cash flow to pay for the ads and to pay for fulfillment. So if you want to spend $1,000 a day on ads, you're going to have to have at least $3,000 credit card limit to float for three days and then like another three grand for fulfillment. So six grand total credit card limit if, you, if you're getting paid every three days from Stripe. And then you just keep scaling and you keep paying off the card every three days. Um, and get higher and higher credit card limits, and that's how you scale profitably. Amaka says, "I haven't started making money yet, but I love you committed. Com I love the commitment to helping us. Keep up the good work, John. Thanks so much for the kind words, guys. Really appreciate it." Mojtaba, thank you so much, John. Always as awesome. Mojtaba here was actually the one guys who posted that screenshot, twenty-one thousand dollars to one day. So good job, congratulations, Mojtaba. Aryam, John, get, may God bless you and give you more wisdom and knowledge. Thank you so much. Appreciate all the kind words, guys. We're going to be wrapping up here in about five minutes. So get your last questions in. Happy to help. Lazaro, in Shopify, you used to use a Burlo, a Burlo to do the dropshipping easy. Commerce HQ has a tool like this. Yes, it does. We have a Dropified, which is integrated with Commerce HQ, which is even better than a Burlo. Um, Michael, are video ads truly a lot more valuable than image? Yes, they are at scale because 50% of the ad inventory are reserved for video ads only. So definitely best to use video ads when scaling. On retargeting, you can use a mixture. You can use image ads, video ads, you know, collection ads, mix it up. Awesome questions today, guys. Really liking where your head is at. Uh, okay, so Neo says, do you have any category recommendations outside of clothing if seeking winners for women? Um, you just look in ad sector. If you go to ad sector, you're going to see tons of products. You know, you're going to see tons of kitchen gadgets, DIY stuff like tools and stuff for your car and um, hair is a big one. So you'll see lots of stuff in there. Fiona says, this is really awesome. I'm just looking forward to having some success with this for once. What about POD? Is there integration? Yes, we are integrated with Custom Cat. Uh, we are also going to be integrating with Printful soon as well. But Custom Cat uh, is, is integrated right now. And we just updated the app, so it works really well. Gary, how do we handle multi-buy discount bundling? Buy one regular price, buy two with different products that have different variants. When the customer wants two items to be different colors. Um, yeah, so we have an app that we're coming that's coming out very soon to handle that issue, Gary. But you can have multiple drop downs um, with your product page. What I would suggest doing is emailing support at commercehq.com, and they'll help you with setting that up. Lazaro is Dropified free for Commerce HQ? No, it is not. It is a monthly fee separately from Commerce HQ. Nathalia. Um, I think we can. I can probably answer a few questions offline as well. Uh, how about Gabe here? How much is Blue Label? We can talk about it on our call. Um, let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 
Yeah. So guys, um, if you have any questions outside of the live Q&A calls, please don't hit up members in the groups asking them privately. That's not the best way to do it. The best way to get answers to your questions is to post your question in the groups. Okay, I will approve the question and I will answer myself or someone else will help you and answer, right? So please don't hit up members in the group and private message them and, and bug them and annoy them. They're trying to run their own business as well. It's best to mastermind and ask questions in the groups themselves, okay? Just, just be considerate there people's time. Uh, Edker, Facebook feed only for video posts or do you add other options when scaling? Um, we start with Facebook feed only now and then we scale into other um, other placements after if it's a winner. Uh, yeah, Lloyd, the product, that's not a winner. Like I already told you, if you launched 144 ad sets and only 10 stuck, it's dead. It's not a winner. Uh, John, thank you for everything. No problem. Thank you for coming. Uh, Lazaro says, thank you for all your answers. See you on the other side. I'm a web developer designer with experience in e-commerce and funnel optimization. I'm excited to try your platform and see how it works. Absolutely, Lazaro. would love to hear your feedback. Reach out to me privately on Facebook if you want to let me know what you think about Commerce HQ. Um, Fiona, is that on Facebook? Yeah, it's on Facebook, the Facebook groups, yeah. Gabe, we have some products in the U.S. warehouse and dropship from China. How do you – yeah, so again, Gabe, we're going to talk on the phone with your questions. I know you have a lot of questions, buddy, but your, your business is way more complex, and I can't handle it here on the Q&A. Tony, no problem at all. See you next week. Jose, no problem at all. See you next week. Uh, is it Gil? Yes, Gil, no problem. Fiona, no problem. Happy to help, guys. Neo says, thanks so much for your time. You can solicit provide some of the best e-com info I've ever read online. Hey, listen, thanks so much for the great feedback. Um, that really like inspires me, guys. Like As long as I'm helping you move forward in your business and you're using Commerce HQ and you're getting results, uh, there's really nothing better than that. That's why I, I'm in this. I love coaching. I love teaching. And I'm here for you guys. So I'm, I'm happy, man. I can't wait to see your, your massive results this month. November is going to be insane with Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Those two weeks are just going to be out of this world. So, you know, get to scaling. Get ready. Get scaled up fast and have your promotions ready to go for Black Friday week and Commerce and uh, Cyber Monday week. Um, John, have a great weekend as well. Edgar, successes with Commerce HQ. Couldn't agree with you more. Ines, thank you as well for coming. Have a great weekend too. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. A couple minutes left. If you have any last-minute questions, let me know. But we'll be wrapping up the Q&A call. I'll get the uh, recording put up in the Facebook group as well. All right, guys. That's it for today. Thanks so much for coming. And I will see you next week. Have a great weekend. And good luck with your scaling. Bye-bye.